First thing we're going to do is take a static pressure. We have to determine how much airflow is moving through the system. Hi, Mitch Bailey here. I want to show you how we use our job link filled piece to get the actual airflow through a system. The awesome part about this is that once you know the airflow, with a simple formula, we can get on a furnace the sensible heat, how much heat that furnace is producing. It only takes a couple of minutes. Uh, so here we go. What we're going to do is we've got a furnace over here that we're going to turn on. We have our job link app that is running right now. First, we're going to take a static pressure and I'll show you where we have to do the pressures to start with just because you need to have the right amount of, uh, you need to be taking your pressure readings at certain test points, okay? We want total external static pressure, which is before the coil, after the blower, and before the, after the filter, before the blower. That's where we want to take our readings. So let's get started. It's only going to take us a few minutes to do this to show you how fast it is and how easy it is to get the CFM for our, that a unit is actually making. And there's only three things we need. We need our static pressure, we need to know what fan speed it's running at, and we need our blower tables for that particular unit. Once we have those, we can go and figure out how much airflow is moving through the system. So this system here is a Lennox unit that we uh, used to use on displays and warehouses in like Do It Best, True Values, and Ace Hardware stores. Uh, once we took those out, we put this one in. This particular one stays in our shop and we use it for training purposes. It's an 80% furnace. It's a Lennox G40. It's a 45,000 BTU furnace, okay? So you do get, gotta have the model number of the unit to look up the, the tables. But first off, I drill a hole over here, and this is my static pressure of my airflow coming in. And then I have a hole just before the coil. This is my static pressure leaving the, the furnace. This unit's rated at a half inch, so we were gonna see how much airflow we're getting out of it. We already know that this is on low speed. I already have it set to low speed, so it's on low speed. It is a constant speed motor or a PSC motor, uh, but it will pull the blower tables for this particular unit and we'll see what we come up with. I also have a temperature probe up here. It's my enthalpy probes taking dry bulb readings for me. And there's one down here on the floor that's taking the return air as it's going in. So I'm gonna get my temperature splits via the dry bulb. This will only take a couple of minutes. So let's turn this unit on and let it go run through its cycle. First thing we're gonna do is take a static pressure. We have to determine how much airflow is moving through the system. So I'm gonna turn it to heat and turn it up so it doesn't shut off. And then let's go ahead and measure it. We're gonna run this unit for about 10 minutes and I'll shorten the time frame. The inducer motor's kicked on. Uh, it's going through a pre-purge cycle. As soon as it's done, the hot surface igniter will uh, uh, turn on. Then it will light the burners. If it proves the flame, it will continue to run. So, uh, and then the blower should kick on after about 45 seconds. So let's go look at our static pressures right now. So, as so our burners have kicked on and now uh, it take a few minutes for the blower, but as you can see from our static pressures, I zeroed them out before we started. In a few seconds here, the blower is going to kick on. Uh, because this is a constant speed motor, it's going to ramp up to the speed it is, and that's it. It'll bounce a little bit, but not too much. We're using the, the field piece app to do this. Uh, the cool part about it is uh, my probes are hooked up. Uh, this is streaming to my phone right now, so currently you guys can see it. Um, and then we're going to pull the blower table for this particular unit. Just take a second. As soon as the blower kicks on. Again, it's like a 45 second delay. Blower should kick on here in a second. There it goes. I hear it kick on. So you watch our static pressure start to rise. So there's one in the supply side and that's reading 0 0.24, 0 0.26, and 0 0.3, 0.4 on the other side. So it looks like we're going to be about 0 0.33, 0 0.34 probably. Uh, let's see what we end up with here in just a second. It's like 0.35. It's running full bore. Yeah, so it's steadied out at 0.35. So if you take a look at, this is the blower tables right here. This is the G4024A45. This is this particular furnace. And what we want to do is we want to go down to our static pressure, external static pressure, which is 0.35 which is right in between 0.30, 0.30 uh, and 
and we know it's on low speed, so we come across, and at point three, it's 665, and at, uh, at 650, if it's um, uh, at uh, 0.40, so we're gonna cut that in half. So we're gonna take it, it's gonna, we're gonna make this about 658, let's say, 658 CFM, somewhere in between here. But we, we can use either one. Let's just go ahead and use, yeah, so let's plug in a tip, uh, 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 an estimated of 658 uh, CFM. So 658 is what we're gonna use for our CFM. And we're gonna plug that into our app now. So now, I've already got my field piece probes in. I've got to uh, like them, they've already been liked. As you can see, our return air temperature is at 65 and our supply air temperature is already at 101 and it's rising. Uh, this unit has been running, we'll run it for about 10 minutes. It's been running about a minute right now. And so we can see what our B2 is. Now, because I have, uh, this is in cool mode, so on my job link app, I'm gonna switch it over to heat. Now that it's in heat, I'm gonna enter the CFM and we decided we were gonna use 658. So 658, just put that in there. Uh, and I gotta get my, I gotta get my uh, keyboard to pick up. 658, done. Now then, let's ro rotate it again. So right now, because the temperature's still rising, we're getting 26,000 BTUs. Now, real quick, on whenever this is an 80% furnace, so it's at 45,000 BTUs. So if we, if we have a 45,000 BTU furnace, um, and it is uh, running at 80%, we're going to multiply this times 0 0.80, and it should give us the BTUs that we have that's being put out, so 0 0.80. And I'll just do it in front of the camera here. So if I take 0.80 times 45,000, we should be getting approximately 36,000 BTUs out of it at an 80%. Okay. Do we need to change the fan speed? Let's let this run for about 10 minutes and see what we're at. Let's see what our temperature is. Now we're up at 106. Of course, the temperature's also going up a little bit for the return. Uh, we'll let this continue to climb. And as you can see, we're at 29,000 BTUs and heading close to getting ready to, to hit our uh, determined uh, 36,000. Let's see how close we can get. It's been running for about three minutes now. We'll continue to warm up in here. Uh, let's look at our static pressure. Has it changed at all? It's at 0.35. So again, whenever you're doing this, you're gonna be looking for the CFM in here, and then uh, according to the speed, and this is on low speed, so we're between 665 and 650, which is 15, so I just put eight degrees in there because we just guesstimated the CFM. I will show you later to you how to use a true flow grid, and actually the CFM that we're getting with these pressure charts, uh, the blower, blower charts, are right on, spot on for this particular unit we're within a few CFM. You can't get much closer than that. But it's always better to use the blower tables that the manufacturer has. If you can't find those, there are generic tables like Airmax Lite that you can plug in all the information and it'll tell you. But your best bet always is to use the manufacturer's tables whenever possible. Okay, so what are we at now? We're at, we're approaching 29,000 BTUs and it's kind of staying steady, so I'll uh, drop my tools. Both my tools have disappeared. No tools detected. Uh, let's see if they're still flashing, if they didn't shut down because of batteries. No, that one's going. Might have to get out of the app here real quick. Let me do that. Uh, let's get out of the app, hit measurement. Sometimes it'll come right back. Yeah, there they are. So now we're at 30,000, it's climbing. And it went right back to the setting that it was at. So sometimes job link, it'll glitch like that a little bit. And these are right here. These job link probes have about a thousand foot range according to them. But after you put it in buildings and stuff, that range narrows down. But typically on a home, I, I can get a hundred feet out of it, no problem. So I can be on the other side of the house and still read my job link probes. Um, temperature's still climbing. We're at 30,000 
600 and 846. Now, real quick, um, the cool part about, uh, and like I said, it's supposed to be 36,000, that's what we should be shooting for uh, after about 10 minutes of runtime, and we're sitting right at five right now. But uh, one of the things you wanna do whenever you're doing this is we want to make sure that uh, we're hitting our numbers let me show you the, the easy way to do this. All you need is dry bulb temperatures. You can do it. This is formula. This is the sensible heat formula. And the way you do that is you're going to take your dry bulb readings, which we've got those. That's the 66 and 110, 109. And I can take that. The formula is uh, for sensible heat. is equal to uh, the BTUs per hour is equal to the CFM times 1.08 times delta T. Okay, not time delta temperature. Okay, so you're changing temperature. So we just do our dry bulbs. Um, right now we're looking at a delta T of about 43.6. So it's still climbing, and as we'll let, allow it to go and do its thing, um, as a, a heat exchanger gets hot, it's gonna continue to heat up. We'll be about 10 minutes in, and about another four minutes. Uh, and I'm, I'll speed this up so you guys won't have to pay attention to it and uh, show as it does it. Uh, but yeah, we're looking probably, probably get about 112 degrees out of it, 111. Uh, we look at our BTUs, we're at 31,000, okay? And it's still climbing, so we're at 31,003, 31,004. As the temperature rises, we're gonna get it. Let me rotate one of the probes to see if we get a little better temperature. Sometimes it's not quite in the airflow correctly and just rotating a probe. The return one, I'm not gonna have to rotate, but the supply one, I might. So let's see if that helps it out a little bit see what we get out of it that way if I rotated it turned it just a little bit get a little bit of airflow across it um, yeah our BTs jumped up we're at 34,000 and climbing so we're getting right where we're supposed to be that's exactly what you want 34,000 we're coming up on uh, nine minutes now we'll give it another minute or two here and uh, 34,008 35,000 Looks like we're going to hit our 36,000, which is just perfect. That's exactly what we're supposed to be. Um, and that's based upon that 658 CFM that we dialed in there. All, all I did was take some static pressures. My total external static pressure gives me what the CFM is through that unit. I just need to know the fan speed, the uh, total external static pressure, my uh, BTU or the, uh, uh, fan, the um, C, uh, blower chart, and I can use those things to discover exactly where I'm at. So I'm at 35,000. We're almost at 36,000 and our temperature is at 116 degrees. So we're going to do the math here though, the, this actual formula over here in a second. As soon as I hit 36, which we're very close to it. Is it going to be exact? Hmm, maybe, maybe not. Depends on the fan speed and everything else. There's a few other issues. But it looks like we're going to get very close to that 36,000. And then we'll use the uh, delta T that it's given us. Again, it's 67.4 right now and 117.8. Let's see if we can get it to one. Eh, we're at 36,000 right now. So let's see what our delta T is. 50.9. So it's 50.9 times 1.08 times our 658 CFM should equal. And let's do the math. So... Um, uh, 658, 658 CFM times 1.08 times 50.9, 50.9 equals 36,017 BTU. So we're right where we're supposed to be. And we did this all in 10 minutes. How long will it take you guys in the field to do this? Probably about the same amount of time. And, and you're not filming it, so it'd be very easy for you. Job link app. Saves you a lot of time. Uh, we're getting a little more than 36,000 out. We're almost 37,000 BTUs. Will we get much more than that? Well, it could probably climb up a little more than that. This is 
um, uh, an 82 percent furnace, so we should get a little more BTUs at it because I put 80, but it's really 82 percent. So if we did the math, um, and like I said, this is 36,000 right now, 176, and uh, 172, sorry, 172. Uh, but we can, if we did the math and made it 45,000, 45,000 times 0.82, which is an 82% furnace, we should be getting close to 37,000 BTUs, which we're, we're right at, 36,900, um, as you can see on the JobLink app. So we're right where we're supposed to be. This furnace is operating very well. It's hitting its numbers. Is there another way to do it? Watch my clocking the meter to get the BTUs of the furnace. You can do it that way also, and it'll give you how many BTUs the unit's consuming. All right. I hope you got something out of this. And if you could, please like and subscribe and pass this along. And hopefully you can use this in the field. Thanks for watching.